Hi, it's Chris Stone from Savello. Hope you're doing really well and welcome to another edition of Savello Live. You'll notice I'm working from home today, hence the giant cow art on the uh, on the wall. Um, it does look like he's nibbling my ear a bit, but he's not. Um, thanks for joining us again for another Savello Live. Um, this is the show designed to talk all things money as well as uh, talk about uh, business and, and, and what we do in business and what we can learn. Uh, today we're joined by an amazing guest, Janet Smythe. Now Jenny, Janet runs her a local accountancy practice um, and she's been on a journey to grow and build her small practice um, but also learned loads of lessons along the way from not only her clients, uh, but also from her own experience. And she'll be sharing some of those lessons with you during our interview later on. So that'd be, um, that'd be really good fun. But before we do that, I want to talk about something we're doing at Cervelo called the Cervelo Guarantee. Now, the, re the reason that I want to want to talk about that is because what we wanted to do at Cervelo is try and make it as easy as possible for our clients to engage with us and know that they had some assurances before they wanted to work with us. So we've put in place a number of guarantees that I want to talk to you about. Before we do that, I just want to talk through those guarantees. So number one is satisfaction guarantee. Number two is in the improvement guarantee. Number three is the support guarantee. Number four is the refund guarantee. And number five is your relationship guarantee. Okay, so let me just talk those through individually. So you've got a bit of a flavour of what they look like in reality in terms of the clients who, who work with Cervelo. Um, it's really important for us to make sure that if something goes wrong, and in any business, any service, any profession, every now and again it does, we commit to our clients and commit to you if you decide to become a client of Cervelo that if you're ever not happy with something that we do, we're going to resolve it with speed, transparency and fairness. You know, if a mistake does happen, you need to be ensured um, that we're going to do what we can, work really hard to put it right. Um, and that's the guarantee that we give you. We can't guarantee that things every now and again don't go the way that you want them to. But what we can guarantee is that we'll resolve and try really hard to put it right every single time. Part of our reason for that is because we always try and improve as a business. So thankfully, we retain the, the, the lion's share the majority of our clients. Our clients stay with us for decades now. Um, uh, and what part of the reason for that is because we just try to consistently improve as a business. We try to get better and better. However, we want to make sure that you're in a position where if you decide that Cervelo isn't the right place for you to work with anymore, uh, or uh, you've decided to self-manage your own financial affairs, we're going to support you transitioning through to working in independently or with another financial planner. Our role at Cervelo is we work with clients where there's a mutual relationship of trust, um, and if you, you feel or we feel that that mutual relationship of trust has gone for whatever reason, we'll help you transition to whoever you want to work to. If we haven't delivered on our service, and this is your the your refund guarantee, if we haven't done exactly what we've said we're going to do, and for all of our clients, they get a scope of work up front confirming the work we're going to do, if we haven't hit those um, though those things, if we haven't clarified every single single thing you've asked us to do and we've agreed to do on your behalf, um, you're entitled to a full refund. Um, we commit to make sure that we deliver a service that's right for you. So that's why we're so confident that, that we can give that full re refund if we haven't. And one of the important things is uh, the relationship. Now, I believe as a financial planner, having a really strong relationship between client and financial planner, having a really strong relationship of trust is mutually important. And we only believe that that of a relationship between a financial planner and client works. If there is that relationship of trust, if there isn't, I'm not convinced we will be doing right for you and you'll be doing right for us. 
That's why we guarantee only to work with you if the, if we've got that mutual relationship of trust and to work hard to make sure that um, if we decide that that isn't there anymore, we support you to we support you to look at an alternative option for the advice you get. So just confirm your satisfaction guarantee. If you're ever dissatisfied with the service you get at Cervelo, we'll make sure we put it right. Your improvement guarantee, we guarantee to try continuously to get better at what we do. Your support guarantee, if you decide that, that Zavello isn't right to work for, we'll help you find either another financial planner or um, self-manage as seamlessly as possible. Your refund guarantee, if we haven't delivered what we said we're going to deliver, you get a full refund. And your relationship guarantee, we will only work with you if there's a mutual relationship of trust and respect between you and us and be adult enough to have a conversation if that isn't the case. <clears throat> Hopefully, if you're thinking about choosing a financial planner, those guarantees reassure you a bit that maybe Cervelo is one that you should potentially consider. Um, hopefully, that's useful. Just uh, if you're watching this, uh, a really quick question. Uh, if you run a business, if you're uh, an entrepreneur or you're a business owner, what guarantees do you provide to your clients? Because I'm, as a business owner myself, I'm, I'm always interested in that. Let us know what your, what your answer is on there. Um, and without further ado, let's move on to the interview where we interview Janet Smythe from Inline Accounts. Hi, Janet. How are you? Morning. Yeah, I'm great. Thank you. Yeah, I'm really Good. well. Good, um, and thanks for the comment about my um, piece of art. It does look like the the uh, whatever is it a cow or a moose or a well, what do you reckon it is? I don't know what it is, but um, it does look like it's chewing on my ear at the minute. So uh, so that's that's a good start. But um, that's Cassie's favourite um, piece of art. So uh, so and I'm at home today. So um, anyway, today's not about me. Today's about talking about you and your business. So tell us a little bit about you. Sure. Um, so I suppose, you know, originally um, I seem to have quite a solid sort of like history of accountancy and I'm not sort of that sad or not sad really, <laughs> but yeah, sort of straight from college and um, yeah, went into sort of corporate and um, sort of studied my way through that um, and ended up with me, um, you know, AAT qualification and then my chartered qualification. And so from there, you know, I sort of went, um, I stayed in corporate for a little while, but then once I had family, it becomes a little bit more of a challenge and um, moved into sort of smaller businesses that can be a little bit more flexible well, at that time. And I think some things have changed quite a lot now, but at that time it was easier to manage a family with a smaller business. So I went into that um, and then it ended up into practice, um, which wasn't something I'd originally planned out to do, but actually really loved it. Uh, I spent five years in practice and then um, decided to start up on my own, which, um, yeah. Exciting. Uh, everyone was like, what are you doing that for? Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it gives I mean, it is a, it's quite a challenging move. And uh, as you know, I've done it as well. Yeah. Um, like, it was funny. I don't know if I've ever told you this story. There was a, um, there was a, um, a point when I decided to set up on my own and I came home really excited and said to Charlotte who was six at the time because this was many moons ago Charlotte who was who was six at the time uh, I'm going to um, I'm going to set up my own business and give up my job and she started crying bless her at oh, six and I was like oh no what have I done um, I said what's the matter darling she went who's going to pay for the holidays now if you're giving up your job but I was like <laughs> Just like trying to explain business ownership to a six-year-old is just like clearly not my forte. Um, tell, tell me a little bit about family and what you enjoy doing like, in your spare time. I mean, they're, you know, they're no longer kids. They're all sort of, you know, doing their thing, sort of 20s. And um, yeah, we have, we have a bit of fun. We're at lockdown. We've all been back home together, which has been, been an interesting, challenging time. <laughs> but, um, having said that, we went away last weekend. Uh, for just a nice sort of family thing, uh, you know, partners as well. And um, we had a really, really nice time. We did some, it was nice to get back to the fun stuff that we Where'd did. you go? We went to Norfolk. Okay. And, uh, a place called Havering Land. So, yeah, not that far, far from Norwich. 
Cool. So yeah, that was really fun. We went go karting and you know did all them sort of stuff that we used to used to have sort of fun doing. We got the boats out and yeah. Yeah. So um, so. Yeah, Sounds amazing. Yeah. yeah, we are slowly getting back to normal, aren't we? Yeah, that's, that's I know. It, it, it was nice. I mean, I think the only thing is we still weren't really eating out. So we was, um, you know, mainly just sort of, or should I say, I was mainly just cooking the indoors. Yeah. But you know what's weird? It's that, like, just having a bit of a change of scenery. Yeah. You know, just, just being in a situation where yeah. you can say, oh, like, it. yeah, it's nice. So tell, tell us a little bit about Inline Accounts. Yeah, so um, five years now. So yeah, it started off just me, um, just me sort of on my own. And, and to be honest, I sort of thought that that was how it was going to be. I don't know in my, my idea, it would just be me sort of beavering away in a little home office. So I moved on from there to, um, to my husband's got a, a workshop and um, I decided to take part of that. So he sort of transformed the top upstairs into my office. Okay. And I worked from there for about a year. Um, and that was, that was good and it was free. Happy days. Yeah, <laughs> so that was yeah. uh, and then I moved into the retailery um, in Romford, which again was a great move for me and um, really, really enjoyed being in, in that sort of vibrant environment. Um, and then and the things I'd grown and grown, I realised, mm, actually, I need a bit of help now. <laughs> so I'm getting a bit snowed under. So I brought on the first sort of lady who joined me and I had an interesting interview with her. I did sort of know her a little bit. So we were sort of um, you know, acquaintances. We had a, a, an interview sitting on the sofas at the retailery. And, um, <laughs> it was sort of around about the 20th of January, I think. So it was coming towards that sort of franticness of the 31st. And I was like, okay, I think, you know, I think it's going to be great. I think you're going to really like, we're going to be into group and work together. I was just like, oh yeah, okay. It sounds really good to me. I said, okay, I said, do you want to start now? <laughs> well, I'm just going to do some shopping. <laughs> I was in Romford to do my shopping. Yeah, no worries. Uh, you <laughs> can start in an hour. Literally, I was like, literally. So, um, yeah, so and that was Mel. Well, she's been with me ever since. I mean, um, she's great. We work really well together. And then, um, just over a year ago, Vivian joined. Um, she's uh, studying for her sort of chartered as well. So she's sort of part way through that. Um, yeah. So she works three days and studies for two. Um, and then um, finally, Helen joined us um, probably not that long ago, maybe sort of three, four months now. Amazing. Um, so it's growing really well, by the yeah, sounds of it. Yeah, yeah. Well, she's still amazing. She does a lot of the sort of like alter data entry stuff and, and sort of like checking through. She can do that remotely. So, yeah. yeah. So, um, Yes, yeah, so we're a little merry team of ladies at the moment. Yeah. And, and, and what, so, so what changed in that sort of, I'm going to be in my little, in my room on my own, just, just doing my own merry way to, I'm now building a team. Yeah, I don't think it was a conscious decision, to be honest. Um, I do like a challenge. Um, and a couple of the clients that I took on were challenges for me, just because of the, you know, the size, the volume, the, the nature of the work. And um, I was, you know, literally working, sort of, you know, taking piles of stuff home and trying to get through it on, you know, this, yeah. this can't continue. I do need to get some help on this. So. But I think, you know, I don't know about you, but to start with, I found that a little bit difficult because I think it's a bit of a control thing in that, you know, when you've done everything and you've done it your way, you suddenly, you know, got to accept that, you know, some people do work differently and there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> so, so I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm, it depends on who you ask. I, I think in, if you ask in my team, they'd say I'm quite a good delegator. Right. If um, if in my own head, I still don't delegate enough. But yeah. I've just done a thing in the business. We've been during lockdown. We I did, you know those those working on the business jobs you sort yeah. of put off for ages, and then you're yeah. in lockdown, um, and we didn't have that. I mean, we new clients have coming back in droves at the minute but we mm. we we didn't have any new clients that was uh, at the start of lockdown so it allowed me to focus some time on working on the business as opposed to in the business which was great and I did everybody's job profiles and said these are all the jobs we do um, have you read the e-myth have you read the... no I know I know what you mean though yeah I know what you mean yeah but I listed all, all the jobs um, and, and it was funny because Cassie, um, Cassie had loads of jobs on there, inc yeah. including like payroll and right. bookkeeping and update. I mean, we've got an accountant, but updating, yeah. updating zero and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and she's like, 
I want to keep control of that. And I'm, I'm, I'm like, you need to give that away at some point in the future. I don't know when it's going to be. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I think I'm all right at delegating. Trying to get everybody else to delegate as well is, is not the easiest job, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, it is a difficult one. And um, yeah. yeah, I mean, you've got to because, you know, you're your own worst enemy if you're not. Yeah, you, yeah, absolutely. You know, speak, and clearly you can't, so yeah. Yeah. yeah um yeah so what's the future hold then like this this sort of accidental growth happened um yeah. unintentional growth happened what's the future hold do you know yeah i mean yeah i mean we're, we're good we're well we think to just grow um generically you know we, i don't particularly market which you know has been really frowned on by some of my sort of creative clients they're sort of like <laughs> why don't you do this and i'm like why are you not getting out there yeah i know literally literally so yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I don't know if it's laziness or whether it's just, um, I suppose, because we, we've sort of grown in that manner, um, it's, it's not been a, a necessary. So, I've, you know, I've just not done a lot of social media and, and sort of stuff like that. And I think um, if where we grow, it has to be at a steady pace. I can't, you know, manage, you know, a huge influx of, of clients because, you know, it's like when you're onboarding people, there's a lot of work to do. Yeah. So, you know, and, and, and if, if I take on too much, then I, I can't offer the service that, you know, I, I do think it's important and I, I want but to then, value it. But then that's one of the interesting things. Part of the reason maybe why you don't need to market is because you do a really good job and people refer you, right? Yeah, I think, you know... I, I think that has been the case, you know, and, and you know, it's, uh, even I'm, I find it quite hard to admit it, but I think that has been the case and it's nice, it, it is nice that that's happened, you know, and literally we sort of started off with that small bank of clients and they have just grown from that, um, yeah. from that sort of word of mouth and, and recommendation, which, is, which has been great, you know. Amazing, great stuff. Um, yeah. So what I wanted to do today is talk to you a little bit about, um, the recent changes that the government have made because i know that like in the early days of lockdown uh, we had uh, an account from Savello live john who was talking about the furlough uh, mm. some of the grants available up front um but there's there's been some more things yeah. there's been there's been an evolution in what that support looks like yeah. now yeah. and yeah. um it's is actually changing so tell, tell me a little bit about the changes so, I mean, definitely the furlough, that's, that's been sort of huge changes. And we're just doing the, the start of the sort of flexible furlough now because that started from the 1st of July. Um, and that's quite a challenge, really, to, to sort of manage that. Um, and, and because the revenue brought in the system so quickly, it's, you know, as we've discussed, it's not particularly friendly to, to input into. No, very, you, you, very you, you were saying the other day it's a lot of manual input, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. And yeah. I think the other thing, it would have been, I can accept that if I do it once, but actually you've got to do it every month. You know, you do that whole manual input. Um, and so that's that's quite time consuming and, and tedious. So, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and is that, actually, right, let, me, let me ask you a question then. Is that, a, is that a Janet job or is that a delegate job? I must be, I do that. I do okay. do that. Yeah, I know, I know. And it's it's a hard one because um, I did have a lady coming in who did, did all my payrolls every month. Um, unfortunately, she has she couldn't come in because of um, her age. So, um, and she was a lady I've worked with pre, my previous roles. Yeah. So, um, she's sort of based at home um, and I'm not able to set her up remotely on this payroll system at home. Gotcha. It just meant it sort of fell fell to me to to pick up, but um, so which is so so in, input in the input in the um, uh, furlough is a, it is a manual process. Mm -hmm. Is that does that apply to all employers? Like if you've got a thousand people on the payroll, does that still imp it's, um, apply? It's up to ninety nine, yeah, ninety nine right. employees. Um, over that, you can do an upload on it. But that's still a decent sort of. Well, that, yeah. that's a body of work exactly yeah. I mean, you know, i've got a payrolls with people of like 25 on now um gotcha. all the little part-time workers um so to, to import that down there are weekly payrolls yeah <laughs> just, yeah. You know, so now the furloughing sort of on the uh, flexible we've now got to work out the percentage of hours that they are working and not working and apply that to the furlough Sort of, um, so, so the changes that are happening is that because it used to be um, 
uh, a proportion of um, the full salary. How much was it? Yeah. It's average, 80% of the average salary. So and that's changing down to what? It's, so this month it's still 80%, um, it's going to 70%, um, but the employer has to pay the other 10%. Um, employer also has to pay national employers national insurance if it's, if it's payable, uh, and pensions if it's payable, yeah. because um, yeah. um, whereas previously that was covered Others. by the government as well. So yeah, you know, little changes every month sort of to, to sort of administer into, um, yeah. and to sort of relay to the clients i think that's also a challenge because you know depending on the nature of the work they're, they're doing um it, it can be quite difficult to sort of bring that in you know if you've got a cleaning business that's maybe bringing some of their employers back for some of the time but some of their employers aren't employees aren't coming back at all and yeah so it's um yeah so that, that's an interesting one yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and is that is that is that coming down now is that like is that going to end at a particular point or are they going to review yeah, it at I a particular think, point um, oh I can't remember the email set out we've got July August September it's definitely I'm not sure about October yeah I need to just check double check that but I think it was definitely July August September okay not sure about October okay yeah and then we're all and back. And let's change it again, of course. Yeah, yeah. Well, which they might do. Which yeah. it's a moving feast at the minute, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but I mean, I suppose the interesting thing is it will have to come to an end at some point, won't it? That's the challenge. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, having said that, you know, the other thing that's come along is the um, this sort of little grant that's going to be administered in February. Okay. So if you're still employing people. Um, in January, which have been uh, furloughed, furloughed during the past few months, you then, and their monthly salary is an average of um, five hundred and twenty pound. Yeah, you get you get a bonus for continuing yeah. to employ, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's quite nice as well. Um, yeah, that's good. yeah I think it's always a little bit of a shame when you've got some people that maybe fall just outside that. But you know, I suppose they've got to set the bar somewhere. It's, 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 uh, it's unprecedented, isn't it? So, so who knows? Talk to me a little bit about grants. Like, are the, what grants are available? Still available? Are they all gone? Or what's happening with grants? The deadline's starting to pass on the grants. Um, they, they had to sort of put, put the stake in the ground on that. Um, yeah. But they, I mean, they were great for some, again, some businesses. You know, if you fell within small business rate relief, you know, you've got the um, grants automatically um, given. Um, if you was in the hospitality um, and you was paying, um, there was the bigger grants available for um, you know, higher rate pay, um, the higher sort of uh, um, council taxpayers. Um, and then there was the discretionary grants which came out, yeah. um, which I think yeah. that was again an afterthought to pick up, mop up some people that weren't <laughs> getting anything, but actually were still having to pay out. Um, so. You know that that was all that was all great. Um, you know we had a few um, few oddies that you know we was rushing through paperwork to try and get them sorted out. Where they were having to provide copies of the lease, but the lease was wasn't correct, so they're having to get to solicit. Yeah. Lease. So yeah, that 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 was um, that was a bit challenging. And there was um, administering in different ways. So where I had some clients maybe coming under thorough. Um, yeah, six, but you know they were different. They all had different requirements. Yeah. So um, again, that was that was um you know something to be more accommodating than others, and uh, maybe that boils yeah. down to the individuals that you're dealing with. But I, th I think the reality with with it, Janet, was because of the speed of it. It was just a bit yeah. messy, wasn't it? That's yeah. that's that's the reality yeah. of it. Um, yeah, I but think... I know I know that I know that one of the things that they brought in was a deferment in terms of paying certain taxes. Help me yeah. understand a bit about that. Yeah. Yeah, so that, that was, again, a really nice little help out for um, VAT deferment. Um, that's stopped now. Um, but uh, ha having said that, I, you know, I was a little bit like, well, if my clients can pay it, I think you should pay it. Yeah. Because all you're doing is you're not going to get away with this. This is just delaying the pain. Um, until it's, it, it's an interesting one. So we, we, we had a couple of clients who use the mortgage holiday. Yeah. And the interesting thing is... Um, for a couple of those clients, they didn't have any drop in income, but they said, oh. well, we might as well use the mortgage holiday as a as an opportunity just to, because we're feeling 
a little less secure than we did. But the challenge yeah. we've got is it wasn't a holiday. It, the capital yeah. was just added on the end. So yeah. actually yeah. you go, all you've done is extended your term by a little bit and paid a bit yeah. more interest. Exactly um, right, yeah. Yeah, so, and, I, and I felt the same about, you know, even the July 31st um, payments for your payments on account for self-assessments. Yeah, because that got deferred as well, didn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah. And I was like, do you know what? If you've got the money, I would pay it oh, because, yeah. you know, come January, you know, you're going to have such a big tax bill and, you know, yeah. it's, it's just painful, isn't it? So, yeah, it's yeah, and I, I sort of feel like, well, if you've had that money, so potentially you've... You know, in, in the real world, you should have saved that tax for that money. So yeah. it should be sitting there. But yeah, it's fine. Um, so, so I think one of the one of the things that we've learned throughout this period is having access to really up to date numbers um, has been vital because we've been able to manage our keep really good cash reserves and, yeah. and manage our finances throughout that period. Mm. Now, I appreciate that that's not not, not ideal for everybody but i think it's important so if you're a business who throughout this period has said you know what i really need to get on top of my numbers a bit more how do they do that what are the steps that um that, that they do that and why do you think that's so important yeah i think you know i think you definitely you hit the nail on the head it's been um crucial to have that, that information to hand and um you know that's our first discussion with a client is that you know what you, what do you currently use um, and, you know, if it's not something that's cloud-based, that's got bank feeds on it, you know, we're already on a, a struggle a little bit <laughs> with up-to-date information. So we have been um, promoting, you know, we're, we're a zero sort of um, advisors and um, we, we put in and start them systems up for people. Um, we get the initial data in there for them. If they want to manage it after that, then that's absolutely fine. Um, I will just give support on it. But, you know, for, for all the clients that are on them systems, you know, we can access that data. We can provide the reporting on it. We can show people how to access the reporting. You know, there's add-on forecasting apps, you know, if, yeah. if that's the sort of thing. Or we export into our own sort of forecasting spreadsheets and, and work on that. So it's, you know, it has actually, you know, it's worth its work, weight in gold, really. Definitely, um, 100%. You know, yeah, and we've been able to access some, um, you know, discounts on that, which, you know, gives you a bit of a starting point. And, and if it's still not, you know, within the budget, there are the starter sort of situations, which, you know, work out around about £5 a month. Yeah. So there is, think, there is, there are affordable tools out there that, yeah, that allow yeah. you to do that. How yeah. many people still come in with a bag of receipts and paperwork? Yeah. And, we still get a few, a few, you know, and we do, we do try. Um, but even then, we now say, okay, you've got your bag receipts, but we'll have the bank statements in a, um, you know, a CSV format, yeah. and we'll import them like that, and we'll still work, we'll still work with them in that format. Yeah. Because you know, them whole days of just sitting there punching in loads of loads of data, manual data entry. Yeah. You know, just duplicates work, like, doesn't it? Yeah, and and it just. It's that sort of scope for errors, for, you know, mistakes. You know, we're all human. It's, it's yeah. key, and, you know, then spending ages trying to find out where your reconciliation is, you know. So, yeah, yeah we've definitely steered, steered away from that. And I think this has accelerated it. 100%, 100%. And, and in terms of the, like the, the recent situation we've been in, how would you, how, what, would you what, what recommendations would you give to a business to prepare for volatile times? Now, hopefully, we're not going to have a time as, as strange as this again, but the reality is change happens, right? So how, how can businesses make sure that they are ready and prepared for when times are tough? I think definitely being up to date is, is, you know, is quite crucial um, because at least you know, you know, who owes you money, who doesn't owe you money, you know, what's your trends going. Um, and, and so, you know, if you're up to date on those situations, you know, you're, you're, you're halfway there. I'd say, you know, communicate with your accountant, you know, <laughs> speak to us, you know, we, we, are, we do help you, we can help you. And, you know, I think that, that again is, you know, that's what we're there for. Um, and it's those clients that have been in touch with us or, or 
responding to us that you know we've we managed to sort of steer in the right direction and, and i think the other bit of advice i say is i've seen clients that have um, got that plan b if you like have have you know an, a strategy um, in case yeah. of something happening and you know i've seen some that have taken quite quite unusual um, avenues um, but i've actually done really well they've looked at you know what's going on in the market they've seen you know, an opening and not been afraid to take a step away from their current business which is you know not able to operate at the moment and, and yeah. do something different with the resources that they've got and and that's been interesting to see that and it's definitely those that have, that have thrived almost um, under these circumstances you know what i think you're right and i think i think like still taking action at a time when when it's uh, i get that it's difficult to but mm -hmm. actually like sort of just accepting the reality is and then thinking about what else you can do is is yeah. is the important thing isn't it yeah yeah um yeah, yeah. Um, um, yeah it's, it's an interesting one because we're probably both in the same boat you know we we're, Having conversations with us, a financial planner and an accountant, are not the <laughs> easiest conversations to have, are they? Um, um, and I, we, I think, I think we we probably make it easier than most. I hope, um, but I think, particularly in the UK, there's a stigma around money, and there's a stigma oh, stigma around yeah. talking about money. Um, yeah. And actually, okay. part of our challenge is just saying, look, we've all made mistakes. Yeah, you know, we've all we've all got things wrong um uh but the only way that you can make progress is just looking at the reality and and, and moving it forward um yeah, yeah, and, but I, mean, I, I don't know if you find this but sometimes with clients that takes a bit of time so i'll i'll do some work on that uh do some work with them and then the following year they'll go i didn't tell you about this chris i'm yeah. just gonna i'm just gonna share this as well and that relationship of real yeah. genuine trust takes Definitely. takes a little yeah. while to build yeah yeah i think i think you're absolutely i think you hit the nail i think it, 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 people are sometimes embarrassed about you know maybe a situation they're in or something that's happened and you know i think it takes a while to people to accept that you know we're certainly not, never going to judge like you say we've all made mistakes we've all done things that you know in hindsight weren't the right decisions but you know it, that, that that's you know by consulting with somebody who might be able to help you make a different decision i think yeah. that you know that's the that's the important thing to, to sort of learn really and, um, and on, on that note um uh, what mistakes do you think businesses make that that other businesses can learn from yeah i, th I think you know from from what i've seen um one of the one of the, the common mistakes is actually to get quite a successful business who's growing quite quickly um, but then they spend too quickly um, and the, the growth is not sustainable um, yeah. so scaling up your workforce too quickly you know moving into um, big premises too quickly you know all those things drain that sort of that margin Cash. on the company and, yeah. and, and that then becomes uh, just that you know literally huge drain on the company that it can't be can't sustain and, and i think it's very difficult to recover from that thing because you know there, there are ongoing costs um so you know you are really in a situation and all it takes something like what we've just had um they literally cannot cover your costs then yeah yeah and you're really in a spiral so yeah. i think you know and my other top tip would be like, don't spend your tax money, you know, don't spend your VAT money. You know? And I think that's, that's the other big mistake that, you know, keep a separate pot to your, your See, tax. We, your we, we, we do that, right? And we've yeah. got this weird name for it in, in our business. We call, call it the squirrel fund, you know, like perfect. the nuts and the squirrel. Perfect. So we've got, <laughs> I, 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 like every now and again, like we have, we have a monthly finance meeting in our business yeah. and a quarterly strategic one. And yeah. on the uh, on the, on the monthly one, it's like how much is in the squirrel? We don't even call it the squirrel account anymore. We just go how much is in the squirrel? Like like uh, and, and Cassie will go X amount of pound. Like, and yeah. I'm like, okay, I know I know we've got enough to cover all our uh, all our yeah. all our stuff. And it, but yeah, that just separating the pot. Absolutely. Assign is, is a really good way to do that. And certainly yeah. we recommend that in the world of financial planning. Like if you've yeah. got a 
if you've got a longer term, medium term and short term goal, just yeah. physically separate the money, you know, and, and have yeah. separate pots to do it. Okay. Um, and make, make makes perfect sense to do that. Yeah. Um, so we've talked about the mistakes that businesses make. What, um, what are the three things you see your clients do that result in business success? Yeah, I think, you know, those that, that come to me and I, you know, and that, you know, I've been, t- took clients right from the beginning when it's just an idea um, and up to them turning over, you know, five, six million, you know, within three years. And you see the trends on that and you see the, the you know, the people that are involved in that and, and the, the sort of roads to success. And, you know, the things that stand out to me, you know, first of all, you, you need that energy, you need that enthusiasm, passion for what you're doing um, to succeed. And I think that's a real common thread. All the people that I see it, like, are, are passionate about what they do. I love what you they know, do. They it. And, 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 and ultimately, when they're selling it, it comes over to other people that they are, you know, that they are genuine, that they you know, love what they're doing and they're going to do their best for you, whatever it is yeah. that they do, whether they're selling your car, whether they're you know, doing you a bit of artwork, whether, you know, whatever it is, you know, I think the energy and passion are there. So I just think the, the other thing I, I see sort of a common thread is that the people that are successful are open to ideas and that they will, um, you know, listen and that they will, you know, sometimes not adopt, but they were open to the ideas and the recommendations and, learning from from other people's experiences yeah. and i think that's that's equally important you know i think you know i you know i started in business just because i've been an accountant didn't mean i was particularly good you know a business person myself um and you know and i've listened to other people spoken and their experiences and and learn from that and i think you know you, you do because being a person on your own working for yourself is totally different to working as an employee for somebody. So I think there's you know, a lot to be lot to learn from that. Um, and you know, my, my overall thing would be to control your costs. And that would be to watch your gross margin and control your costs. Yeah. You know, and, you know, just make sure that the margin that you're making, you know, your break even point is, is is there and that you're you know, you're on that track. And again, it all goes back to the data and the source. If you've got yeah, the data, good numbers. you'll know when you sit on that. And what's, so, what, what's the, what's your, been your greatest challenge in growing your business and what's been the biggest lesson you've learned? I think um, actually being a manager, I think, of people, I think is probably my hardest. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't particularly, you know, like telling people what to do you know <laughs> you know no, that is you know, that is honestly and, my, and yeah. my people, ladies that work with me will, will say that you know that you know I don't I don't particularly like I'm not you know it's not in my comfort zone and, and I sort of I struggled at first with the whole sort of like networking going out selling the most you know again wasn't comfortable with that it wasn't something I'd ever had to do yeah. um, I really had to my first sort of network meeting I went to was actually a chamber of commerce meeting and um they do that whole sort of round circle where you talk about yourself. And I just remember so sweaty. <laughs> Literally. And I was like, this is, you know, I'm just not in my comfort sort of area for that. So, you know, I've yeah. overcome that, you know, learned from it. Actually, I'm not going to die from, you know, talking about myself for, for five minutes. So, you know, man up, get on with it. And so, yeah, I've sort of learned. But you've got to learn. I mean, as, as a small business owner, you've got to learn all these lessons, have you? Like nobody yeah. teaches you to market or... <laughs> Or, exactly. or 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 stand up at an event or the, yeah. so yeah and and there's a I think you're right there's a fear factor involved um, uh, that that you just either like do or don't do you know it's yeah. just you know it's it, it's it's a, it's an interesting one isn't it how yeah. comfortable are you with like sort of networking now are you do you enjoy it more yeah, or I mean, the, 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 sort of, the girls laugh at me now because they're like, you just talk to anybody, don't you? I'm like, well, I'm sort of, I've changed my sort of attitude towards it and just sort of see it more of a, a social sort of event and try and sort of block out the fact that everybody's probably just there maybe to sell to me, I don't know. But I just ignore that really and take it as a social event. Uh, yeah, I, 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 think, I think you... Like I'm, I'm, we've probably attended a lot of networking events, but the, yeah. I think you sort of know who's trying to give you a pitch, and yeah. you sort of slowly work out who's looking to build a, a longer term relationship and potentially yeah. work together. But that yeah. takes a bit of skill as well, doesn't it? Because I've, yeah, I've been, I've been a network 
meetings where I've spent an hour talking to somebody and they're just talking at me. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, okay. I just, I, I've wa- you've wasted my time and actually you've wasted yours because all yeah. you've done is yeah, not, not focused on the, div- yeah, pitch me. Yeah. Um, don't, don't pitch me. Don't pitch me. No, I think I've learned that as well. And I, I, sort of you know steer away from that but yeah. you know I've met some great people through through networking now and I think that's that's the thing that I now get the value from it you know people that I met right at the beginning and you know when I started out you know you know my clients now they're my you know friends yeah. they're my colleagues yeah. you know and I think I've realized the value of it and so yeah I've sort of crossed the hurdle of, um, <laughs> you jumped, a, a jumped the hurdle yeah, yeah. We, we met in the chamber didn't we we, uh, yeah, pretty I don't know sure. We met. Yeah, I think we must have done, Chris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. Um, so that comes to the end of the interview. Mm. I hope it weren't. I hope we made it a little bit easier for you. Have you done one of these before? I haven't. No, I oh, haven't. So no, no experience again. Another first. Yeah. No, oh, just tick it off. Just tick <laughs> off the list. Um, so um, our audience can find out a little bit more about you and what you do and your business. Help, help us understand where people can find out a bit more about you. Mm, sure. sure. I mean, as I, as I mentioned, I'm not particularly the, the social media person, but on my list to do. Um, but, yeah, we've got a website. Um, it's it's pretty factual website, just the sort of inlineaccounts.co.uk one. Um, but I'll definitely, you know, pick up the phone, send me an email, um, speak to our clients, you know, all of those things. We've got some clients listed on the, um, on the website sort of for recommendations. They're um, they're always um, a good. I think you know I I would have confidence going to somebody who's used somebody and to yeah. get their opinion. You know, good or bad. You know, what are their experiences? More than happy for people to do that. Um, I would say drop in and see us, but left to be in the window now. I think you <laughs> maybe, know, but... maybe one day, maybe one day. Yeah, I know. I know. It's I... such a shame. Yeah. We- weirdly, I had my first socially distanced client meeting on Friday. Yeah. Um, it was. A- a new client um and my tendency was to um uh shake somebody's hand I know. It, and it, I know. it's trying to get used to this new reality I isn't it um, i literally had the same experience on a friday a lady come in and um, um it, it was a bit of an emotional meeting for her because there was some sort of other stuff going on um and i, I don't i measured out two meters on the floor <laughs> And so I sat our chair sort of on this yeah. like two meters, and I, I felt it was just oh, yeah. it was just horrible because and you know, particularly like you say, if, particularly if you've got a client going through a bit of a time, you want to you you want to you want to like be empathetic, don't you? And that's the thing. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah. So yeah, we've got through it. So. We'll we'll get there. We'll we'll, yeah. we'll 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 get back to whatever new normal is. Um, new normal. Pretty soon. One, um, new thank you, thank you so much uh, for getting involved. I really appreciate it. Uh, Have a lovely thank you, day. Oh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. So that's the end of to this week's Savello Live. Um, as always, uh, feel free to leave comments. Let us know what you think, um, but also tell us, um, tell us what you want for future shows you know what we'd love to do is make sure that we're in a position where we are tailoring these shows to deal with the issues that are most pertinent to you and i'll be putting a few bits out on social media over the next couple of weeks um seeing what you'd like to see so on that note have a lovely day hope you have a um, you have an amazing time, whatever you're choosing to do today, and we'll see you next time on Savello Live.